But also, uh, what, what Twist was saying there was, you know, in regards to, um, uh, what, in regards to the tokens, uh, you know, obviously one of the big things is, is you know, what, how is, how is you know, money going to be spent, things like that, and and like Augie and Andrew have always done in this is really try to not do anything that could harm the community. I, I know that people out there say, well, a lot of devs say that. You know, well, we have devs that have proven that, I think, over the last uh, 10 months. And uh, I, I, there's just no reason to, to do that to a project. And I, I think we, we've shown that, um, you know, if we have anything, you know, we're obviously going to be in open discussions about a lot of things. Um, and really our goal is to build this price, actually build the, you, you take this utility and build up what we're, what we're putting out there. And there's no reason to then crap on that. So um, I know that that's a big thing, but um, I'm excited for it, man. I think this will be, like I said, the first time where you can actually uh, use case to a token in this space i don't know any other project out there that has been able to take their token and actually bring real use case to it to build a floor for their project consistently not with just a pump or anything like that or with staking this is actually a consistent floor being built um, over time and over people using a cold storage and so i'm, I'm super excited where this can go um again if we can get a lot of people out there that can use this you know uh you know, we'll be sitting pretty and I, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to say that lightly, but I mean, I, I think that we'll do pretty well. And that's just my own personal opinion. Um, yeah. I wanted to add some, um, which, which is better than just hold account. Cause a lot of folks get stuck on how many holders, how many holders that because in the space, we haven't been used to jumping into projects where, uh, we have movement in the price based on actual utility or, microtransactions so this is going to be something new for a lot of us um before we go with daniel and wadi i do have two questions one um person messaged me about um dark mode for the wallet i know that's something you guys are working on augie yeah so dark mode is something that is going to be worked on um right now i put the focus of the uh of the blockchain team to really get the uh you know to get it out here get it get it working get all the features in but as soon as we have the functional features that we've put on our roadmap that we want to get out immediately then we'll then we're going to address a couple of the uh couple of the aesthetic issues so but dark mode will be um it's it's in the early early stages of the uh, roadmap awesome and if you can um when you were talking about the different uh wallets the hot wallet cold cold storage and the offline. If you could explain, um, based on the question I got, the only one you could transfer to and from, um, if it's not a pure wallet, would be the hot wallet, right? If it's from pure wallet or or to pure wallet, from a non-pure wallet or to a non-pure wallet, that's only through the hot wallet, right? Yes, that's right. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about that, Dr. Crypto, because that reminds me of something else that I should, uh, should I should explain to people. So the hot wallet, yes, it'll work like every, any other hot wallet, so you can move money back and forth. The cold wallet can only go from your hot wallet to your cold wallet and then back out from your cold wallet to your hot wallet. The offline wallet, you can move offline tokens, so we'll take your hot wallet asset and move it into your offline wallet as an offline token and then you can exchange that with anyone else that has um, a pure wallet in an offline state so then you can exchange that token with them and once you exchange it into their offline um, token wallet they can reclaim that into their hot wallet after that in order to move something from hot to cold or hot to offline you need to have an internet connection in order to do that because, because for the offline token to be created or for the cold storage token to be created, it has to be written into the network and it has to be moved at that point. But once you have something in your offline, the offline wallet's the only one that can exchange with other pure wallet, offline wallet, then you can do it without internet connection and then that person is going to need to have um an internet connection to take it out of their offline wallet back into their hot wallet um so now they have access with it in their hot wallet and uh, 
when it comes to recovery, if your phone gets lost or it gets destroyed, you can obviously recover it by just getting a new phone and then using your um, your seed phrase to recover it. But here's the one caveat I want to remind people because I talked about this before, but some of them might have never um, maybe didn't weren't part of that conversation. So the way our offline wallet works is once you take a token offline, and it's held in my wallet, and let's say I plan on exchanging it with Austin when him and I meet in an offline state. Um, if I lose my my phone or if it gets destroyed and I get a new phone and I recover it, it'll recover your hot wallet, it'll recover your cold wallet, but it will not recover the offline wallet. So we really recommend people when they use the offline wallet, only use it when you're planning on um, exchanging something offline. If you want to hold something offline, put it into your cold storage. And the reason we do that is because when you recover it, we don't know who owns that offline um, token. We don't know if it's still in my wallet or if I passed it. Now, some people might decide, like, for example, I'm just going to give this as an example. If I move, you know, five ETH into my offline wallet and that I bump phones with Austin, and now the five ETH has gone to his offline wallet, and then I grab a new phone real fast, and I recover on that new phone, and um, if it can recover the five ETH that's in the offline wallet, now Austin is screwed. He doesn't have that because I took it back, essentially. So it's a way people could possibly run scams on other people, so that's why um, we've separated the cold wallet and the offline wallet. And we we ask that users use the cold wallet for cold wallet storage and use the offline wallet just when they need to uh, exchange offline. Um, so that way, if they ever have to recover it, they don't have to worry about losing something that's in their offline wallet. So if you got a, if you end up getting a new phone and you get the hot wallet and the cold storage recovered, you it would automatically give you a brand new offline wallet on that recovery yes it would it would and then yeah. then you could move then you could move offline stuff into into that so it would still work the identical it's just that you can't recover the offline wallet however yeah. if you were yeah. to somehow if you were to somehow recover your phone or you found that lost phone and you were to turn that back on and open up that wallet that hundred dollars or that five ETH that was transferred over there would still be there because it's actually on that phone at that time. So that is one thing that I know um, we've talked about before on this. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and the real purpose behind that, and and um, to explain it in regards to how it would be used when, when I think of it, if I if I move a hundred dollars in my offline wallet because I know I'll probably be doing transactions and um and won't have internet access or um, any phone service, that $100 is there. I go out, I buy from street vendors who have no access to internet also, and I pay them. And then when I come back to an online state, I move that whatever was in that offline immediately back to my cold storage or back to my hot wallet because there's no reason to leave it in there unless I know I'm going to use it again or use the rest. So it's best not to keep anything if you're in your offline unless you plan to use it. If you put some there and you decided not to use it, it's kind of like I move money from my savings to my checking. If I don't use it in the checking, I may move it back to my savings and not let it sit there in the checking so I don't spend it, right? Yeah, exactly, Dr. Crypto. So I'm really going to recommend, you know, MMI is going to recommend your offline wallet should be used for immediate or near time spending where you're planning on spending that. But I do want to tease something. Um, our technology today is going to be different than what our technology tomorrow is going to be. We're going to continuously improve this. But I do want to tease this one thing. Pretty soon we're going to have our own peer chain, which is going to be up and running. And what that's going to do is it's really going to enhance and make our offline wallet very robust. So we have some really cool ideas um, with that. So I just want to let people know that, hey, um, <clears throat> we have some improvements planned for our offline wallet on the way it's going to work and protect our users to, you, you know, even to a greater level. And 
um, make it more convenient for them to use that offline wallet. So we need to put some improvements in there. We have some improvements in mind. We've sketched out on how those improvements can be implemented by our team and they're working on it. So I just wanna let people know that, hey, somewhere in the near future, I'll make some more updates on the offline. And I think people have a real reason to get excited about it when they see how it can actually be used in the near future. Yeah, I think that's something that's really important here is that, uh, again, I, I don't know if Augie actually labeled how many people we have on the wallet team, but we're continually adding people to the team. Um, you know, this isn't just a stagnant team here. It's getting bigger and bigger, and it's actually bigger than when I was there. Um, I think I, I think they might have added a couple people since I was there. Um, yeah, there's been at least four or five people added full time on there, Austin. Plus, we have additional people that uh, have certain expertise that jump in from time to time to help sketch out something or work on a specific uh, technology. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, obviously there's going to be people that are going to be working on this, uh, you know, troubleshooting, you know, even if people that's why we're going to be moving to a discord as well. So people can put in some some tickets and things like that or work tickets if things pop up with their wallet and actually be able to talk to a human versus like some AI bot. Obviously, we'll have some probably AI bot responses to certain things, but you'll be able to then eventually talk to someone who can actually, you know, make changes or do things. So that's another positive thing here. Um, and then continually building this out, like I said, you know, things that are in there right now um, are great, but just know that there's already things being worked on for the future. And uh, this will continually grow, continue to get better. And uh, we need people to, to download this to give us feedback again to continually make this better. So uh, that's another reason why a community is so important. So with that, uh, Daniel, what's up, buddy? I saw your hand up. Uh, what do you got for us? What's going on tonight, guys? How you doing, Augie? I hope you're doing well, brother. Hey, I'm doing really well, Daniel. Thanks a lot, man. I uh, I appreciate hearing from you. You're always uh, a soothing voice to hear from, so it's nice. Uh, it's nice hearing from you again. Sorry, I miss you guys in Cali. Doctor Crypto is never gonna let me let it down, but I had to work. Um, I uh, I, I guess uh, Doctor Crypto loves to jump ahead of me and um, take my questions away, and I was gonna say something about the microtransactions, but he already took care of that. And then, you know, Twiz did a great job. I was going to ask about the wallet, um, the buyback wallet, and um, Twiz did a great job of that. So that was answered. So I'll just tell you how excited I am for Meta Week. Um, I think, uh, you know, this is going to be a great, great week for uh, MMAI in, in general um, to market ourselves outside of this just um, cryptocurrency atmosphere that we're all in and a great opportunity for um, MMAI to showcase all of its technology all in one place and how it integrates together and works together and plays off of each other. I think it's gonna be a good time. I think it's gonna be great. Um, I think MMAI is gonna steal the show out there. Um, my personal belief is I think the blockchain is probably gonna be one of the headliners out there and uh, we'll see if I'm right or wrong, but I just think that uh, it'll probably be one of the headliners. And um, I'm excited to, uh, to see you guys work outside of the uh, the average cryptocurrency, um, you know, marketing to to move out to the masses at these events um, and really, you know, showcase showcase MMAI as a blue chip um, and, and really move the project forward. So exciting times, I think, for MMAI and happy nine month anniversary to everybody who stuck through this thing for nine years. As I was look, I mean, nine months as I was looking down through this thing. I see some people that have left and, and, and are now back and some people who have been here forever. So it's nice to see everybody huh, nine months later where we're at and where we're going and so excited about the wallet and man, reading between them lines, Augie, um, the offline transactions, you know, you can't recover now, but we're working on some great stuff in the future and we're going to enhance the offline transaction usage, but read between them lines and, and let me know what's going on. Uh, great segue, Augie. Appreciate that. Now, now, you, now you got everybody thinking, but yeah. So thanks yeah. for coming. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, thanks a lot, Daniel. And since you mentioned something, I just want to talk about this real quick. I don't want to get into any kind of a side thing, um, but uh, you know, obviously, the um, we're super excited because of everything we have working. But there's also a lot of uncertainties in the in the crypto market right now with everything that's going on. Um, with the way SCC is out there uh, behaving with, uh, with the things they're, they're saying about uh, exchanges and so forth and how they're positioning their stance and making it even stronger. I know it has a lot of people concerned. I know there's a lot of uncertainty. So we'll see how things play out. 
But but one of the things that I really want to point out to you, and I talked about this almost from day one, um, I, you know, I always said, hey, blockchain is much more than cryptocurrency. It's not just cryptocurrency. There's going to be a lot of use cases for blockchain in the real world and also in, you know, in the in the metaverse as well. And there's going to be a lot of overlap. So, you know, I, people have already seen like some of the technology we're working on that doesn't have anything to do with crypto. We've talked about how we want to bring one of, you know, one of the ecosystems in one of the blockchains in our ecosystem is geared towards industry. So we're not putting all our eggs in um, in one basket. Um, we've got it spread out. Um, crypto is something that's going to move forward. It's going to grow. It's going to have growing pains. There's going to be regu regulatory stuff that the crypto world is going to have to deal with. I don't expect crypto to go away, but um, I do expect some some growing pains to, to come about. But during that time, I think we, we're also going to try to expand into a new market that's outside of crypto. So I just want to plant that seed as a little bit of a, um, a, a bright side of the tunnel. You know, even though we're kind of in a, some people might look at it as a little dark spot with uh, what's going on. There, there is some light at the end of the tunnel, and we're MMAI is definitely working towards that. And uh, Augie, I'm glad you talk about that. I wanted to jump in before Austin with the Wadi. Hold on, real quick, Wadi. Um, while you're on that same topic, um, somebody sent me a question. It, this is not something that is. Um, related to MMAI itself, it's just the whole market. As we look at, um, I have Coinbase, I know some folks had Binance, uh, I see Crypto.com in regards to the institutional uh, um, side, not the retail side yet. But are there any off-ramp companies out there? I know Transact, for us that's in the U.S., folks outside the U.S., they probably have zero issues. But are there any companies out there that we can put as a third party in the wallet if we KYC seed where we'd be able to off ramp? Because off ramp is going to be a big concern for us if Coinbase and Crypto.com end up having off ramp issues or or um, eliminate that. Yeah, so um, I'm always looking for that, Dr. Crypto. I don't have a solution for that right now. Um, we're always looking for that. And you're right, outside of the U.S., uh, people that are using our wallet um, will have some off-ramping capabilities with uh, with Transact. But we are looking for that. A um, couple of the banks that, uh, you know, got taken down recently um, were some of the solutions for the off-ramping. So it's, it's, it's a difficult thing. I think as regulations clear up, we'll do that. But... I just want to let people know I'm actively working on trying to find a solution for that, but I, I don't have anything in place right now that I could say that it's coming soon. Yeah, I'm thinking regulation is probably going to be when when a lot of these things will get resolved. So I just want to put that out there for the person that asked me and other people that might be worrying and thinking about that. Thank you. Uh, awesome. Go ahead. Or is it Wadi? Yeah, go go to Wadi, and then uh, we'll. Uh, I have a, a one more question for Augie, and then uh, if no one else wants to come up, we'll we'll close the space. All right, well, go ahead, Wadi. Hey, hey, what's going on, everyone? What's going on, Augustine? Hey, Wadi, great to hear from you. And just so everyone knows, Wadi is a true bona fide. Um, um, what do they call those people that get on stage and sing? <laughs> performer? Yes. performer yes he's a true bona fide performer and when when we go when dr crypto i austin and all go we we just sing off the screen what other people wrote but wadi comes in with his own stuff hey hey augustine you give us enough soju we all we all sounded great <laughs> go ahead wadi i'm doing i'm doing great great to hear from you again no, no, I actually uh, appreciate that, and it's always good to speak to you again. But I was going to say, because as far as the pure media, I'm a bit confused, but at the same time, if it's not the way that's going to work, then it's probably an idea that you could um, try. So basically, I understand that it's going to be a DAP, right? Now, is that DAP going to be 
connect a to a recording studio or are you guys going to have your own recording studio because me myself as an artist um i haven't considered myself an artist a long time but hearing about pure media and handling the copyright and everything else i'm considering getting back into music um so you mind elaborating a little bit more on that yeah so um here's how i'll talk about the the pure media part of it so the pure media is designed for artists and and creators so and and this will even go beyond like artists so if you think about artists you know we could talk about musicians we could talk about um art as in like paintings and and so forth but even when you think about like content creators that are creating specific style of content um when you one you want to protect your your ip your intellectual property your your artistic property you want to protect that so our technology is going to do some kind of watermarking protection system so when people do share that on in web3 in a blockchain um and web3 technology based thing we can we can track that and we can make sure that hey this is the original file or this is the person that owns it if you you know if you sell like you create music someone wants to pay you a, a ton of cash for it and have access to it or someone wants to commercialize what you did and use it in in videos for promotions or whatever so we want to give that mechanism that's going to be there now why do we can create applications we can work with studios and so forth but i think what we really would like to do in the in the long run is create the technology that's going to underline this capability to work across many different platforms so when you have because there's going to be a lot of people out there that are like hey i want to get some kind of social media web3 blockchain based um sharing platform just like youtube works or like vivo works where people can share music and you know there's a lot of different music applications so there's going to be new music applications that are going to exist in the web3 space so we want to create that technology that underlines it and we can plug into these applications and then they can use our tech to help protect their the people that come onto their uh platform and share share their um you know their intellectual property so that's kind of the goal behind it but wadi i think what we want to do is we want to work with creators in that area and we want to work with uh the platforms that are working on um sharing that and then see exactly what needs they have and how we need to customize it to to fit those needs and fit those applications and then do it organically okay that will be all thank you so much yeah no i appreciate that wadi um and uh you know the one of the questions that has come through and and maybe uh, augie you know just knowing what's come through this last week with with coinbase and Binance, and I know this is a t tough discussion, uh, you know, but I, I think it's always nice to be prepared for who knows what's thrown our way. And, um, you know, I, I, we, have, we had a few people reach out and, and you know, want to just maybe some clarification on, you know, uh, with, with um, you know, Gary Gensler and the SEC out there deeming a lot of these cryptocurrency projects, a lot of cryptocurrency projects that are blue chips, right? We're talking Cardano, Polygon, Solana, you know, Mana. Even even we're going to meet our our good old boy, uh, you know, Sandbox CEO over there at Meta Week. You know, and Sandbox's uh, token is now deemed a security. You know, uh, maybe you can give uh, just a, a an overview of you know what 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 a security do to us as a project. What would we do if there was some requirements or things like that coming forward? Um, you know, just to give some light here, because a lot of people think that you know a lot of these projects would go away. And uh, what can we do to sort of, I guess, boost some confidence in our community that we're we're here to stay regardless of what's pushed our way? Okay, so so there's a there's a few different ways I want to handle that, and there's a several different aspects I want to touch on, Austin. Um, the first thing is, you know, us as MMAI, I think anything that exists in our in our physical world, in our um, digital world, um, anything that exists, it's it's natural preservation is always most important right so us as a as a project us as moving forward as a technology company and doing everything we can do we want 
to continue to exist and we want to thrive. So, so as new regulations come up and as new requirements come up, we're going to do everything possible as quickly as possible to get within lines of the areas that we want to that we want to play in. So long as they give us a way to move forward, we're going to do what it's going to take to to do that. You know, we've invested a lot into this um, into this project. I know everyone that's on here has invested, you know, their time. Uh, a lot of people have invested even their money. But uh, we want, to, you know, us as a as MMAI, we put a lot of technology, a lot of work. We're hiring a lot of people um, behind the scene to bring this stuff out. So we're not going to make these type of investments as a company without having long term plans, right? And we know that there's a lot of questions out there. So, so that's the first thing is we're always going to try to uh, live within what what's required. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, with the SEC, one of the issues that a lot of, um, you know, exchanges and the blue chip projects and stuff like that, one of the issues they have is they're saying, okay, the exchanges are securities. Okay, I can, I can understand the argument. And they're saying, okay, well, go ahead and register as a security. Well, if it was that simple, and if that's if, and if the SEC gave the these companies a way to do that, then I I don't think that would be an issue for for some of these large blue chip companies to go ahead and do that and get within the compliance that the SEC is asking for. But the SEC is not being truthful and it's not being honest in this way. They're saying, okay, to the exchanges, okay, you need to register as an S, as a uh, securities exchange. Well, the problem is, as soon as they register as a security exchange, there isn't one crypto out there outside of Bitcoin that the SEC recognizes that any of these exchanges would be able to put on their exchange and sell. So, so that's that's where um, there's an argument being made by some people that say, hey. SEC is not being fair and they're not being truthful in this. So if they really want um, the people in the crypto space to come under the regulation, then they have to create a way that it's going to make it possible for for crypto to exist there. So so that's something that I think is going to get fought out. And you have to remember the SEC is a regulatory commission, but they're they're held under um, the three branches of government, right? They're held under, obviously they're under the executive branch. So um, there's some power structure there under the executive branch. But then there's also legislation that can override or change what the regulation does. So legislation comes into play. I think legislation, a lot of people know, is kind of gridlocked. It's going to be hard to pass through stuff through regulation. But the third branch that I think people really need to consider is the judicial branch. And, um, you know, there's other agencies like the EPA, um, you know, there's there's the agency for for obviously guns and ammos and so forth. And the Supreme Court has really um, reined back a lot of uh, things that regulatory agencies have done because they they felt like there's been some some overreaches and things going on. So this is this is going to be a fight that's going to be ongoing and it's going to be fought through several different branches of the government. So we'll have to see where everything plays out. I'm not smart enough to pretend or know exactly how this is going to work out. What's a true security? What's not a true security? Um, I'm basing a lot of my knowledge on people that are experts in the area and what they're talking about. But we'll have to see where it goes. It's going to take a long time, I think, for this to play out. But we're here to be real players in this. We want um, we want to do what what the different governments and it's not just the U.S. government. It's going to be the global governments and it's also going to be the governments around the world that's going to put regulations out there. So it's something that the crypto world's going to have to adjust to. And we'll do our best and we'll try to be on the cutting edge of making those adjustments because as us making all these investments into into our our project and into our technology um i want to position our company to make sure we're ready to move and be ready to move into any kind of regulatory situations that we need to fit into 
Yeah, and I think uh, one of the one of the big things here too is you know a lot of us had this discussion, and and I'd love to hear your take on it. And I know this is a little off topic, but uh, it's just been a hot topic this this week, and something that I think it's nice for projects to talk about in full transparency is you know what what do you think will happen if if regulatory agencies come back and they're requiring a lot of uh, cryptocurrencies, and maybe they come back and say MMAI is a security, and we want you to register as a security. What will that do to a lot of the? I mean, would you see a lot of other projects you know that are out here? which could be deemed scams and things like that fall away just because of the process to get that you have to jump through for the SEC to become a registered security? So here's here's what I think about that, honestly, Austin. Um, I think a lot of projects down here, they don't have enough in their project to do what they want to do without the SEC being involved. We've seen a lot of projects fold because they don't have the technology they don't have the money, they don't have the capability of delivering what they wanted to deliver. And even if they deliver a small portion of the technology they promise, do they have a way of getting that technology out there? And in the current environment, can they get that technology delivered and used and, and get the things out there? So even if they, if they have all of those things together, then yes, I think, I think they have a way to move forward with it. But I think the bigger problem is, what do they really have? I think where MMAI, where we really um, have separated ourselves, you know, I said this, a lot of projects go into this, like if we look at things traditionally of how technology work, they'll go to a capital venturist or they'll go to like seed funding rounds and so forth, and they'll get a certain amount of seed funding round and they'll develop, that'll be usually based on an idea or based on a person's capability that seed funders will come in and give a certain amount of money. But once that money is, is given and they they develop the technology the seed funding is to develop technology then you go into venture capital and now the venture capital comes in to be the force multiplier okay now you have the technology um you proved it in a small use case maybe a larger use case but now you just need scalability and we're going to come in with cash and make you scale so so there's a lot of money that gets invested up front, and that's how a lot of projects went after it. We did it a little bit differently. We partnered with, with the laboratories that do the research, that develop technology, that have a lot of technologies already made. We just need to customize it for our use case. And that's how we kind of came in. So we, we kind of had our technologies in place. We had our brain trust in place. And now we're just trying to create the applications to bring it into um, um, bring it into the market. And then we're using our, um, you know, one of the reasons we went this route is because we wanted to use our social media structure, use our influencers, use the people in our community to really help spread the word. And then we'll put the money on top of that. So I think that's where we kind of positioned ourselves a little differently on is on how do you develop this technology and what's the upfront cost? Their upfront cost is very high. That's why I see a lot of projects folding, even projects that that had good intentions and wanted to really deliver something. But at the end of the day, they found out they just didn't have enough to get it done. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And uh, no, thank you for the explanation. Uh, Dr. Crypto, what's up, man? Yes, I have several things I wanted to bring up. The first one is um, based on a conversation I had with you, Austin. I just want to let folks know if they want to get out of a Coinbase wallet or move their um, like the top hundred holders, if they want to transfer all of their tokens, um, there's no transfer fee, and that will doesn't affect your status if you're moving your uh, everything in that wallet to a new wallet, right, Austin? Yeah, correct. We don't we don't have a transfer fee on the on the um, taxes right now. Um, you know, we, we have been in discussions about when when we want to lower taxes. That's one thing that we've talked about. Um, I've been push I've been uh, pushing a little harder on Augie for it. Uh, we're we're still in discussion. So, um, uh, but as far as transfer taxes, yeah, no transfer taxes there. And if you transfer it to a new wallet, the the old wallet will pretty much disappear because there's zero MMAI tokens in there, and then the new wallet will obviously have those those tokens inside there. So I, I don't see anyone moving up and down in terms of ranking. Yeah, it doesn't know it doesn't affect your your um holder position in regards to that top holder thing that everybody's concerned about. The other thing is I have a question here, Augie, in regards to um paying the fee for the wallet. Some folks are thinking, well if I put a hundred fifty dollars 
in the wallet if X amount of it goes towards the fee. I just want to, uh, if you can clarify that, when you go in the wallet, when it actually comes out, there will be a separate place that you will click to, that says to add cold storage, and that's a tr separate transaction and not anything to do with what you have in your wallet, correct? Um, I'm I'm sorry, Dr. Kripke. Can you repeat that? I didn't quite uh, catch the uh, question. To, yeah, in regards to paying for the cold storage and the offline wallet, you, you'll actually have to go in the wallet when it comes out and click to um, a, a, a button to buy that. That's completely separate, and you'll click to buy it um, as a separate transaction, right? That's correct. That's correct. So when you download it, you get the hot wallet automatically ready to go and you can start using it. And where the cold wallet, so hot wallet's right up top and then below that you'll see the offline wallet, below that you'll see the cold wallet. And the cold wallet and the offline wallet get activated together. It'll be grayed out. There'll be an activation button. When you press the activation button, um, you can pay the, the money. It'll be a one-time activation fee once you have that activated inside that wallet now you can use the cold feature and offline um feature um as long as you have that wallet awesome thank you thank you and i know we're going to be closing soon i just want when you're closing whatever closing argument there's a lot of folks in here and they've been on the telegram can't wait for to hear the big news in the pump or whatever if you can without um dates without specifics let us know what to expect after um, the Meta Week, after Meta Week, what to expect? Maybe from the Metaverse, from the wallet, from the uh, uh, um, Pure Chain or whatever, the properties. Is there anything at all we should be expecting without dates, without any specifics? Before you answer that, I'll let Austin go if he wants to say anything, and that could be part of your closing argument. Go ahead, Austin. No, no, no. You can go ahead there. I can answer the question. Sorry, I, I was off. I had my mute button off. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Dr. Crypto, so here's here's what people can expect from us in the immediate future. So as far as the Pure Wallet goes, we're in internal testing, um, and everything's very fluid right now. And um, we're getting we're getting very close to the to the end of this where we can start opening it up um, to the uh, to the community. So that's we're right on the uh, we're right on the edge there, and I'll keep everyone updated as as I get the uh, information. So Meta Week is going to be really important. Um, Austin's going to be out there. I guarantee he'll bring his camera. He'll bring his mic. Um, he might even bring a couple of clean button-up shirts. I'm not too sure. Maybe he'll go polo. But uh, we'll pull the camera out, and uh, we're going to share some cool features with you on what we have going on with the metaverse, what's going to be coming out right after Metacon, what we can expect, what's going on with our pure world. So I'm going to wait for the metaverse because I want to kind of show some of the new properties we have, some of the new things that we've been working on in the uh, in the technology um, and when I say new properties, I don't want people to misunderstand me. I mean like technology. Um, I mean in the sense of technology, not the not the properties that we've already sold. I mean just the uh, the new technology that we're we're putting into the metaverse and new capabilities we're we're putting into the metaverse. So you guys will definitely hear more about that in two weeks when we get the uh, uh, the metacon um, going. As far as the pure chain go, we've already started working on developing that. I think over the next 30 and 60 days, you're going to get a lot of updates from me. And um, it's it's 
it's cl it's much closer than it's further away of getting us getting our uh, pure chain going out there in the in its initial beta version so that's something that's gonna that's gonna happen pretty quickly too um the d apps you know i mean we've talked about some of the dapps in here i've mentioned a few of them so you're going to see the dapps coming into our pure wallet which is going to be cool because people are going to have dapps they're going to be like oh wow this is already built in here it's it's going to be even outside of the crypto space and it's going to open up a lot of people's minds and ideas i think it's going to get a lot of other companies and technologies out there that are going to want to integrate some of our capabilities so um um they can use some of our tech to build out their capabilities in their in their platform whether it's a wallet um i don't know if i mentioned this earlier i meant to mention this earlier but like our offline wallet i would like to do an api um with other wallets so if other wallets wanted to integrate our offline wallet into their system now you can exchange offline tokens between our wallet and their wallet as well and as we develop this because i have some ideas for payment gateways for e-commerce you know this is tied into our pure world bringing businesses into our pure world but that offline payment capability the real-time payment capability i think is going to be a huge thing for our pure world and for companies that want to come into the pure world and sell their products in there and then i think if we open up apis to other other um wallets and they integrate our offline payment capability into their wallet now it could be something that's used not just in the pure wallet but it could be used in other wallets as well so we do want to work with other technology companies out there and share the technologies we have and integrate it into their platform and vice versa if they have certain things we can integrate into ours and build this into a more robust ecosystem where all of us can be um have a uh, you know because like when web 2 first came up it took a long time to develop it but now a lot of things in web 2 are interconnected so we need to make that interconnection in web 3 as well Awesome. I see a specific question. What are we presenting at um, Meta Week? So we're presenting our wallet, our uh, blockchain, our metaverse. Um, how about the the gaming? We're presenting the game, also the the third person shooter game. Yep. At the the metaverse is going to be. We're going to have our our um, pure world in there. We're going to have the the gaming in there. We're going to introduce. Um, some stuff that's going to happen on your on your cell phone as far as the metaverse is concerned and people are going to be able to put their hands on it and play around with it so that's that's going to happen with our uh, pure wallet we're going to have um, we're going to have a system where where they can actually go in there and, and put things into cold storage exchange things we're going to have like a little sandbox for them to play in so they can experience that so they're going to see that we're going to be there talking about our pure chain and talking about ecosystem and showing them how all of our ecosystem is going to work i'm going to be very excited to talk about to other metaverse projects and let them know that some of the technologies we're working on with our with our new pure chain and how we can help drive certain features in their metaverse you know when we were talking about the pure world i came out and talked about um like security and safety and how we verify who people are and how do we you know protect people and put some guardrails in there so i think our blockchain can help with that with our wallet i think we can integrate our wallet to help people like when they're going into gaming like let's say they're in another metaverse they have gaming they got reward systems there's certain um weapons that maybe you might get in the game there's certain rewards you might get um maybe they don't have the blockchain to run all that efficiently enough cost effectively enough maybe we come out with a better way for them to run it so we're going to be talking to a lot of other i think projects out there i'm really interested in talking to them and saying hey here's our blockchain we're really working to develop this for ourselves but we're more than happy to share this technology with you put it into your metaverse help develop it in the way you're using it there and we're gonna we're gonna you know when i when i talk about this dr crypto initially um I'm not I don't even want to charge these other projects to work on this technology because they're going to give us knowledge on what they're doing and how they would like for this to work and we'll work with them and develop that technology without any kind of financial commitment from them up front but once we develop that and it gets in use and now there's an actual use case for it 
we'll figure out some kind of partnership on how how they can share our technology and how we can get uh, some revenue back from that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, I see somebody else messaging me. Um, they're looking far ahead because Bitcoin Miami already happened this year. But do we have a plan for next year if it doesn't uh, con uh, if there's no conflict with our schedule of anything else that we're going to try to do Bitcoin Miami or in other expos um, after uh, Meta Week, right? So as many of you know, Dr. Crypto is one of the biggest cheerleaders out there and one of the biggest promoters out there. I feel like I should give him the Don King haircut, but he's been promoting us getting it to the Bitcoin Miami, getting into other shows out there. He's really pushing for it. Austin agrees with it. I like the idea. We're going to, you know, we're going to get out there. We're going to want to get into this now that we have our products that are coming out we definitely want to be a part of these shows so i haven't committed to bitcoin miami but yes that's towards the top of our list we want to be there this is the first one hopefully we'll get s several other ones in in between there but uh, yeah dr crypto i agree with your idea i'd like to get out there more and we'll try to do it as much as we can and especially especially the big ones awesome i, I guess that's it i don't have any other questions and um, I think uh, you ended right with telling us what gonna what we're expecting out of uh, Meta Week. And I know now everybody's at the edge of their seats to either see what Awesome's gonna load up there, or after that's over, what we're gonna get. Because I know we'll be able to jump on and access some of these things after Meta Week ourselves, also. So I know now they're on the edge of their seats. They were on the edge of their seats for you coming on here tonight. Now it's Meta Week that they can't wait to go through so they could see what's next. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of hands-on stuff. I, you know, again, I want to go over there. We'll be able to showcase more of the game, like I said, more of the metaverse. We'll share a lot more of the details out there, and then, uh, you know, hopefully, be able to jump in there and play around some more with it. And and then on top of that, you know, uh, the wallet is, uh, you know, right there on the horizon. We're we're working through it, and I I can't wait for this to get into everyone's hands to, you know, actually, you know, be able to feel what we've been working on over the last couple of months. And so. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want any closing statements before we hop off. I, I appreciate your time coming on here. I know it's a Saturday in, uh, in Seoul there, so appreciate your time. Um, I don't know if you want to close out anything before we get off. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for all the support uh, for everything. Um, it's taken us nine months to get here, but uh, we're right on the uh, we're right there knocking on the door to getting our wallet out there. I think the wallet's a game changer. I think it's going to establish us out there. So I just want to thank everyone. I know it's kind of late for some of you out there, so I appreciate all of you. I appreciate you listening to us. Um, um, thank you very much, and I look forward to um, you know talking to you when we when we release this uh, wallet, and then definitely I'll talk to you at the uh at the meta week with uh with austin so once again thank you and uh until next time